What's happening, MJ traders and investors? It's Rod with the Power Group. Welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth, your home for MJ stocks, crypto assets, news, and interviews. Also home to the best MJ community. Today is Monday, February 26th. Hope you had a fantastic weekend. And in this video, we're going to be discussing a topic that I've been getting a lot lately. And that topic is why are some names, some MJ names, specifically, you know, your Tilrays, your High Tides, and the Canadian names down after Germany legalized? when they have the most to benefit. Uh, there's some other names in the US like Cureleaf that comes to mind that is a huge beneficiary of German legalization. And I had a lot of comments on my prior video and they were asking, a lot of people were asking, why are some US names up and why are Canadian names down on this news? So I'm gonna give my thoughts and opinions on this topic. Before we get to it though, as always, this is not financial advice. This is for entertainment and informational purposes only. You should never ever buy or sell anything based on anything that I say or anything that I write. And also, full disclosure, I do own Tilray and High Tide in my portfolio. And if you can like, subscribe, tick the bell, all that good stuff, you'll be notified on any future videos or when I go live. Also, you can follow us over on X, formerly Twitter. The handle for that is at Group Pow. Going to be using that as my platform of choice going forward and getting a ton of followers lately on there. So really do appreciate, love each and every one of you supporting me along the way. And as we navigate this journey, this was the video that I posted a couple of days ago. Germany legalizes, officially legalizes MJ, and it's going to be a two-stage approach. So there's going to be pillar one, and it's going to be for not-for-profit and, you know, home like cultivation and possession. And then, and then pillar two will be for profit companies, right? So it's going to be a they're still working on the details for that, but this is expected pillar one to go live on April 1st. And the reason why I think that the, the biggest reason, there's a few reasons why I think some of the Canadian MJs are, uh, stocks are down and some of the US names are up uh, is because we're still expecting rescheduling to schedule three is the most likely scenario. And that's going to benefit the MSOs the most longer term and then uplisting to the, to the IC and the NASDAQ for these names, right? And access to capital in the US that's going to benefit the US MSOs even more. But once we get a headline, once we get, you know, DEA comes out and approves HHS's recommendation to Schedule 3, not saying that'll happen, but I think there's a good chance. And I think Schedule 3 is the most likely scenario, and I think it happens between now and the end of April. I could be wrong, but that's that's kind of like the timeline that I've been saying and following on the charts. That's what the tea leaves are saying. We could see some explosive upside into that, you know, into that time frame. So I expect, you know, some of the U.S. names just to melt up into that. But when we get that DEA headline, if they come out and they approve Schedule 3, these names like Tilray, your High Tides, your Canopies, your SNDLs, they're going to skyrocket because that headline alone, people are going to flood in and it's going to be those names that they target, right? There's tons of people in the U.S. Can't, that can't buy a Canadian name or USMJ because they can't buy OTC or they can't buy in the uh, Canadian exchanges. Same thing with people who are, I know people who are international in, you know, Europe who can only buy NASDAQ listed names and they can't even buy MSOS ETF. So what does that tell you? They're going to go to the Canadian LPs that are listed on the NASDAQ, right? Your Tilrays, your High Tides, your SNDLs, your Canopies. So that'd be reason number one. And then reason number two is we pretty much already knew that this was going to be the case, right? We knew that Germany was going to legalize. I had been saying for multiple months that we expected a vote in February. It was more than likely going to get passed in February and go live in April 1st. And that's exactly what we got, right? So it's kind of like when the Fed goes to raise interest rates or they pause or they cut. When the consensus, when, you know, it's saying that there's a 96 probability that they're going to pause rates. Well, when they pause, the market doesn't really do anything. But if you know, everybody thought they were going to, if 96, if there was a 96% chance that they were going to pause and then they cut, well, that would be a drastic outcome because the, the market wouldn't be expecting that, right? So when everybody's expecting something, the markets are forward looking and it was already a known event, right? We knew that this probably was going to get passed. They were just kicking the can down the road for so long and they could only kick it down the can, uh, kick it down the road for that much longer. So uh, it was an inevitability. It was imminent and it, we got exactly the time frame that we were expecting. So I don't think the you know, the MJ names here in Canada, we're going to, like the reason why they didn't see much upside is because we are it already priced that in, right? Some of these names. And then we also have names like NVDA. I've been saying for a while now that I don't think MJ is really going to steal the spotlight. I don't think MJ is really going to enter a multi-year bull market until big tech and crypto has its final blow off top moment. So if we take a look at NVDA and also AI right now is a big investment thesis. It's very hot. It's a hot topic at the moment. Look at NVDA, just on an absolute tear. It actually confirmed a weekly bull flag, and it's targeting one thousand and eight dollars on this weekly bull flag after they had blowout earnings. So again, a lot of the fact, a lot of the attention is on 
and stocks are a popularity contest. And right now, MJ just isn't popular, but it's a great buying opportunity. Again, I'll never tell you to buy, sell, or hold, but that's what I'm doing. I actually added some Tilray today. I uh, added just a tiny bit in my RRSP. I've started doing some tax prep for 2023, and because of my short-term rentals, I'm going to have a pretty hefty tax bill. So I decided to add it to, uh, add to my uh, RSP, which is my retired uh, registered retirement savings plan. For those of you that don't know, uh, here in Canada, you can add that and then offset your income, right? So it deducts you can deduct that much off of your taxable income for the year. So by adding Tilray at this absurdly low price, I get it at like a dollar seventy six. Uh, USD. So if I add that to my RRSP first 60 days in 2024, you can deduct that off your 2023 tax bill. So that'll help relieve some of that tax burden for 2023. And I just couldn't resist these prices. I'm still looking at adding MSOS as well, but that's what I'm doing. And like I said, I think AI is just really stealing the show at the moment. And then there was also some news from MJ Biz Daily today. Canadian government hiking MJ regulatory fees in April. This isn't excise taxes or anything like that. That's just fees that apply to the different types of licenses like micro cultivation, standard cultivation, nursery, micro, standard processing, medical MJ sales license, security clearance application, import export permit application. So this is uh, basically a flat fee or a percentage of gross revenue, whichever is higher. So this would be on an annual basis, right? So I don't think this was anything to to worry about like I don't think that's why the Canadian names are down or anything like that it's not it's not like it's a huge amount of money anyway but you know it, it, it's definitely something that we need to see the federal government come up you know start to support come up and support the MJ industry here that's something that they've been saying as well as well and there should be a, an update with regards to the MJ act at some point in the spring they said that we can expect that and then also another reason why we're expecting more downside in a name like Tilray is because the technicals we're already pointing that way. We had a daily bear flag after the earnings reaction. We hit basically a double top there at 252, 254 on the NASDAQ, and then we sold off and anything over, sorry, anything under the 0.32 fib there at 211 on this daily bounce was just a weak bounce and a daily bear flag. So once we failed to get above 211, we did not negate the daily bear flag because we were, it was a weak bounce. We couldn't get above that. That was key resistance. Once we lost 184, that confirmed the daily bear flag, and you take your measured move there from the high to the low, move it out to your 0.32 fib, and that gives you your measured move, and it was saying we were targeting about 154. So the low now is 171. It's a double bottom with the low of Friday, actually. And right now, from the low to that daily bear flag target, we're only 10% away. So we could still, in theory, drop another 10%. Doesn't mean we have to go there. We could even extend that. We could drop to 150. We could see a flush of 150. But at the moment, it's all about the monthly time frame. We're still just looking for a monthly higher low and then a higher high. So we have our higher low here at 161 compared to 150. Now we need the higher high with a break of 340 to be in a monthly uptrend. And then we would join names like, if we go here to my community page, you can see here that I posted all the current MJ monthly uptrends. You got Cureleaf, AYR, Green Thumb, True Leaf, MSOS, IIPR. You got Verano, Terrasen, C21, Grown Rogan, Nova MJ. So eventually, Tilray could be one of these names that confirms a monthly uptrend. And I think that is more than likely going to be on a headline, more than likely going to be rescheduling. There's talks that Safer Banking is gaining traction as well. And some people are saying that could happen before rescheduling. I'm not really in that camp, but we'll see. Uh, anything's possible, but I think we could get them sometime this year, both sometime this year. And then, like I said, I think Schedule 3 before the end of April is more than likely. And then if we take a look at High Tide as well, High Tide from, well, from its current price, let's just use its current price because that's the best way. It's only about 30% away from confirming a monthly uptrend. And then if we take a look at Tilray, Tilray from current price, it's still, it would have to go about 100% to confirm a monthly uptrend. So I think a name like High Tide might confirm a monthly uptrend first, and then Tilray would follow. And then a name like OGI is very lagging because it, it has been acting as a laggard. We haven't even formed the monthly higher low yet. So we're, this is all coming off the low. So we're just looking for the high, the bounce to top out. Then we'll form a higher low and then we need the higher high. So OGI is definitely a laggard and it was a great swing trade opportunity looking for it to act as a laggard. So OGI is essentially here and then it still needs this higher low followed by a higher high. So that's where we're at right now in terms of Canadian MJ and then yeah, US MJ, like I said, there's still a lot of, you know, hype and uh, the biggest catalyst is going to be rescheduling. So people continue to add, you know, your, your USMJ because they know that inevitably we're more than likely going to get full-blown legalization. We're probably going to get rescheduling to Schedule 3 and then descheduling at some point I think is the end game. And that's going to benefit these MSOs tremendously. So it's not surprising to kind of see those melt up. And then once we see 
you know, a, a headline that they approve schedule three, if that happens, then you're going to see these Canadian names absolutely explode. And we also had some clues here, some cracks in the armor on Tilray. We had a stochastic and a MACD bear cross. We lost the 10 week moving average. And it usually happens in that order where we lose, or sorry, where we see a stochastic bear cross on the weekly, then we lose the 10 week moving average. Then we see a MACD bear cross. And then the same thing on the flip side, when we see a bull cross, it's usually the stochastic that crosses first. Then we get above the 10 week moving average. Then we see a MACD bull, uh, bull cross. And then we're still topping out at the 50 weekly moving average, but we are gearing up for another golden cross here with the 50 day below the 200 day. And now that we got this weekly MACD and stochastic bear cross out of the way, uh, if we can just get a weekly candle close, preferably two or three of them over 211 there, the 50 weekly, we're likely heading to the 100 weekly at 287 and then ultimately 725, which is the 200 weekly moving average. And a lot of their names, GTBIF, for example, got very close to its 200 weekly moving average. So if Tilray were to act on a laggard on a headline, and you see the floodgates open up, then if we were to get back to around that 200 day, sorry, the 200 weekly moving average, that would put us around $7.25 USD. So hopefully this video was helpful. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you think there's any other reason why Canadian MJ is down. If we just take a look at the market right now, you can see here there's quite a bit of red. And then, you know, if you take a look at Tilray just over the last couple of days, it is dropping to daily lower lows. And then if we go to USMJ, we're seeing a down day here on the US side of things as well. And the, the sector moves together in tandem, but not down to the day, the second, the minute. But if you look, if you zoom out, when it out, zoom out, look at the monthly, look at the yearly, these charts more often than not look the same, right? And then for example, MSOS over the last few days has been bouncing, right? And it actually confirmed a daily uptrend here with the low, high, higher, low, and higher, high. So again, just because, you know, we closed at the high, on Friday, here we are down losing the low of Friday, kind of joining the rest of the pack, right? So again, I think that's why USMJ continues to melt up is because a lot of people are speculating that we could get rescheduling. Prospect of safer banking has been looking great as well. So, and I've always said that safer banking is gonna pass because we need the floodgates to open up and Wall Street needs to get positioned, right? And they're not gonna be able to get positioned until these names and the US names are uplisted. Like we know Cureleaf, TerraSend uplisted from the CSE to the Toronto Stock Exchange, the next step is going to be the US major exchanges, the NICE and the NASDAQ, right? So once that happens, that's when the, the real money, the institutional Wall Street money is going to flood in, right? So better better to get positioned now. And I think, I think that's what a lot of people are doing. And that's why we're seeing relative strength in the US MSOs. But hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, smash the like, I would appreciate it. Hope you have a fantastic day ahead. And we'll see you again on the next video.